so we'll kick off today and I am first passing it over to um, Ali Adams over at Christchurch NZ so take us away Thanks, Avril. Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see um, lots of people joining. Um, and thank you especially to Stephen and um, Seeds for pulling this together. Looking forward to it. So I'm Ali Adams. I'm the Chief Executive at Christchurch NZ. We're the Economic Development Agency for Christchurch City. Um, and um, it is my absolute pleasure to um, introduce our panellists today. We have um, four fantastic panellists covering three brilliant Christchurch startups. So we've got Kareem Sabet and Vanessa O'Brien who come from Orbiz. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Kareem and Vanessa. Orbiz are looking at, I love this, um, this line, solving the problem of unreadable and boring reports. Um, they take really complex data and use the Orbiz platform to present it in uh, the information in a way that is really easy to understand, quite dynamic and very interactive. And we've also got Adam Hutchison here from Overcome. So um, thanks again for joining us, Adam. Overcome are looking at solving a very topical problem, which is um, the way of overcoming phobias, anxiety, or panic disorders all from your own home. And they use virtual reality technology combined with clinical expertise to help um, address that problem. So I'm really looking forward to hearing a little bit about that. And our third fantastic startup here today um, is Nadia Scartosi from um, eClean. Nadia is actually on farm in her gumboots in Ashburton, so actually in the field getting things done. eClean are looking at solving the problem of increasing contamination in our waterways. It's a, a big problem. And they offer a modular device for waterways or fields that actually remove contaminants and monitor nutrient levels. So um, just a huge thank you to all of our panelists for joining us and giving up your time today and really looking forward to hearing your insights. So look, without any further ado, I'm just going to kick into it because you're not here to listen to me. Um, so maybe, Adam, perhaps we could start with you. I wonder if you could use three words to describe your startup experience. Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks, Ellie, and hi, everyone. Um, the three words that I would uh, use to describe my startup experience would probably be um, chaotic being one because it is a, a chaotic environment, um, exhilarating, but also at the same time fulfilling. So those would be my three words, Ellie. Great words. So can you talk a little bit more about um, a, a, about chaotic? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I guess, you know, like any startup, you, you start with this vision or this idea um, and the way in order to get there, I think, can involve um, a number of different sort of pathways. Um, some of those pathways are good, some of the, some of those are, are, are not so good, um, and it's through that sort of chaos that you navigate, I guess, that you want to get to your end point. So um, you sort of, you know, you, you, you have this idea of where you want to get to, you just don't know how to get there yet. So it's about that sort of feeling it out and um, what distribution partners you use, um, you know, sometimes you're developing new, you know, technology, new software that um, you have no sort of precedent to um, to sort of work off or anything so within that comes a lot of chaos but it's incredibly exciting as well um, at the same time that's fantastic thank you how about you Nadia okie dokie so um I would say um endless opportunities and hectic as hell sorry that's too many words but yeah <laughs> Himself. It's very similar to um yeah. to what Adam just talked about with chaos um and 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 the 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 hectic was it was it more hectic than you expected? Oh, heaps more. Yeah. Oh, every hat you can imagine, from accounts to scientist to engineer to salesperson. Um. Yeah. When you first start up, you have to you have to. You right. You um have to do a multitude of roles until you get the capital to be able to pay people to do those things for you. Uh, that's really interesting. Interesting the common themes um here. Vanessa Kareem, how about at Orbis? Well, we've got two different ones, two different sets of words, but probably quite similar as well. Uh, hectic was actually my first one, so that that resonates. Um, stretching. It, it is very stretching. You have to grow a lot, um, but also rewarding. Mm, very similar themes yeah really similar would you agree with that Kareem I would but Vanessa took my word stretching I remember when I told her about stretching yesterday she's like oh yeah no that's a good word so I didn't realize she was actually going to use it um, <laughs> I see what you did there Vanessa um the one of the things I mean that's absolutely the whole thing kind of it just resonates but relentless is the the, the one that really comes to mind. it's just non-stop relentless it's um uncomfortable 
So you're always outside your comfort zone. You actually cannot exist in your comfort zone. Otherwise, you won't get anywhere. Um, and, but the end one is fulfilling, same as Adam there. It actually, with all of this, all the madness, it actually makes, it's really, really fulfilling for what we're trying to do and when you get things going. So, Such a common theme from all of you. You know, it's kind of like, yes, it's chaotic. Yes, it's relentless. So yes, it's going to stretch and grow you, but the rewarding, exhilarating, uh, positive give back is is makes it all worthwhile, I guess. Yeah. Um, thank you. That's a nice quick fire start. So I'm going to go to Nadia now and ask a little bit about why Christchurch, Nadia. What what do you find is helpful about being a startup here in Christchurch? So um, my startup is a hardware and software software company so we need to, we do a lot of applied science and engineering so the Christchurch um, innovative environment was perfect for us being um, part of the Ministry of Awesome and Te Ohaka um, at Ara has been like just an amazing experience we've been able to have a laboratory we've had a free office space um, and just a, ma a massive network of um, business contacts, contacts being in that startup environment. Um, yeah, really um, can't say my more praises for um, yeah the environment at um, Te Ohaka, Ministry of Awesome. Well, that's really nice. Fantastic. Nice shout out. I know that Marion's presenting later on today, so um, she'll be really pleased to hear that. So how about you, Adam? What, 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 what has made Christchurch a good place for your business to start? Yeah, I think the ease in which you can access the outdoors is really important. So we're a team of eight here. Um, we're all incredibly passionate about the outdoors. So the ability to work really hard during the week, for example, and then get into the mountains, into the ocean, um, that's really important to us. It allows us to get that work-life balance um, really easy and, and it'll come to work really refreshed. There's also really passionate people here that are able to um, assist. You know, Anton, for example, Christchurch NZ and Martin, amazing people that have helped us along our journey. Um, super important and also we've got the new health technology center here which has just opened up um, there's a really big focus here in Christchurch on health tech digital health you know making treatment more accessible to people um, and so we're really stoked to be actually in the health technology center and utilizing some of these sort of networks and and connections so um, for those reasons that's why you know I find Christchurch um, a great hub for for startups Great, fantastic. Kareem um, and Vanessa, maybe I might come at it at a slightly different angle for you guys. What, what's been challenging about being a startup in Christchurch? Are there things that have made it difficult for you? Um, yes, I think it's it's not just, I mean, for us, it's um, with, with global aspirations, the, 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 it's not just Christchurch, it's the New Zealand, a little bit being a little bit isolated from the rest of the world. Um, that has been challenging. I think that's the biggest challenge. If you if you, if you're kind of here in New Zealand, Christchurch has a great sort of startup ecosystem, and it's great to be here. Nowhere else is better than New Zealand. But in terms of um, outside of that, it's a bit challenging trying to trying to do business in Europe or trying to open the market in the US or just just time zones and phone calls, and that has been the challenge. Yeah, yeah. Would you would you echo that, Vanessa? A hundred percent. Like there are so many positives about Christchurch and New Zealand, but we are no for a business like ours. Like we're we're a SaaS company. Um, the market in New Zealand is never going to be big enough for us. Um, our aspirations have to be global, and with that comes the challenge of being isolated at the bottom of the world. Um, I think I'd look to companies like for the the likes of say Sequent, who have done that really successfully. Um, who have built out an incredible team based here in Christchurch, but also had global ambition and gone on and grown globally and then, then got acquired um, much later in their journey. So I think it can be done from Christchurch. There's just other challenges that come from it. And um, uh, I think one of those challenges um, is quite interesting. Adam, you were saying, you know, Christchurch is great because you can get out into the outdoors, but I just... Uh, how you've achieved a work-life balance as a startup, I don't know. So um, I'd definitely be keen to hear more about that. Well, I think he you you set up the right business. <laughs> I've got a real um, yeah. Uh, there, there's a number of things, but being able to get out into the outdoors and sort of prioritize that, I think, is also really important. So just trying to almost force that balance, um, so that you can do the things that you want to do outside work, and that means that when you're when you're in that sort of work mindset, um, then you're giving it everything. So it's probably just um, there are sacrifices that come with that, but I think just being strict around that is, is I guess, what for me personally, what I've found. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Um, uh, I'm going to come back to you, actually, um, Kareem. Um, what, what's your advice? And it, it links a little bit to um, to what Vanessa was just talking about. But what's your advice to other people looking to solve a global problem right from right here in Christchurch? Focus. Absolutely focus on what it is that you want to do. Do not try to boil the ocean. Um, you know, we when you set up a business, you always think you've got the best idea and that everyone will love it. And then you go, right, I don't know why they're not doing this, why they're not buying. I can solve everything now. It could be, you know, different industries, different verticals. Let's go and, and rule the world. And that's that's really never going to happen as a startup. You need a lot of money to be able to do that. So it's really focusing on where are the wins? What can you do really, really well? Um, and, and just keep at it and being relentless around around that um methodically and i think that's probably what i would i would say is the learning learning um process for us has been real really interesting seeing others kind of do it differently and struggling and so we've you know we're we're uh, and that's the advice i would get is just focus on what you need to do and just go for it that's really interesting did, did you learn um, the hard way yeah. or did you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> absolutely no, yeah. that's probably the only way to learn yeah yeah yeah. yeah. How about no you, one tells you how hard it's going to be to start up a, a, a business until you actually, well, they, it's like having kids, you know, until you actually do it and get yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's exactly right. There's no handbook. We're all making it up. Yeah. So, um, Adam, would that be true for you? I know you've just come back from a trip to the States and you've been meeting with some pretty um, significant organizations over there. Would you agree with what Kareem's just oh, said? I couldn't agree more. It's about sort of putting the blinkers on. Um, you know, you're going to get pulled in every direction to try and solve this aspect of the problem. But I think just staying focused. Um, Capital is really hard, especially right now. So I think it does cost a lot of money in order to try and, you know, solve solve a problem. So I think you do need to remain focused um, and, and just be strict around not being pulled um, sort of sideways. So 100% couldn't agree more. Yeah, great. So um, Nadia, what's one thing when you um, when you look back, if you um, one thing you wish you'd known before you started a business? So uh, what's the one bit of advice that you wish someone had said to you? Hey, look, it's going to be like this. Um, I wish that someone had actually given me a list, right, of all the places where I could apply for funding, just a big, massive long list and an explanation of what I had to do to get funding. Instead, I spend many hours on the internet and talking to people and trying to find different ways to fund different components of my um, my company and my journey. Um, if I had a known, if there was like a, a, a startup book that, you know, when it would have been so helpful instead of me having to try and, you know, and, and not just in New Zealand, there's a lot of funds overseas. I've just been in Thailand. Um, the government over there has funds for software. And so just, just being able to, yeah, um, understand where to get money from and and how hard it is. <laughs> That's oh, it's really interesting. Look, and I know that we're working on that here at Christchurch and said it's very difficult because it's always moving. Um, but um, I think that's a really insightful answer. What about you, Vanessa? Would you agree with that? Or is there something else that you would wish someone had told you five years ago or before you started? Yeah, look, in this role, like if you're a founder or a co-founder of a company, you are going to get a lot of advice. <laughs> There's going to be people giving you advice from this quarter, that quarter, the next quarter. Um, the real challenge is working out which advice to take um, because you want to be, you know, you want to be humble and you want to listen and because you're going to learn a lot through getting the right advice. Um, that's it's not always easy to know which is the right advice and you learn that as you go. But the, the one piece of advice that I wish I had gotten, say, five years ago or before we started this journey was around the whole circles of control. Like what are the things that are in your own power to control? What are the things that you can influence? And then what are the things that you can't? And then learning know where to put your focus around that because the things that you can't control, you can spend a lot of mental time and energy um, on those things, but you can't actually impact the outcome of that. So it's about learning where to put your attention. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. And I see in the chat here, look, we've actually had your um, your your problem solved by um, by Avril. So Avril, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your um, your startup. 
yeah, I don't want to take away from this panel, but um, that's the exact um, problem that we're trying to solve over at Funded. And so we just want to put everything in one place so people can go on and search for everything they're eligible in one place. Um, and so we're working hard. <laughs> um, so you can, um, we have, I just put in our link, but you can also follow our journey in, um, on through my LinkedIn. So let's connect and let's talk more about that. I'd love to learn from um, your learnings as well. Great connections already so there are some nice questions in the chat so I might actually um uh, uh just jump to these so um Aurig has asked how the um how does the angel community help in Christchurch so are there any gaps or highlights to comment on because getting seed funding is really hard perhaps um uh, Nadia can you talk a little bit about how you got your seed funding to get started so I actually got my seed funding from the council um, oh, yeah. from yes, from Christchurch City Council through the Smart um, Smart Cities um, Initiative um, program, but um, in terms of angel investors, um, it's really good to go and get in front of the angel investors because if they don't give you money, they're sure as hell going to give you some advice right? They're going to tell you and connect you to where you need to go. There may not be a massive pool of money in Christchurch, but um, it's their connections and their business connections that, um, yeah, are worth gold. Yeah, that's really interesting. But how about you, Adam? How did you um, get your seed funding to get going? Yeah, very much, um, you know, pitching to angel investors. I think we've got about 20 angels or so involved in Overcome. Um, some of those are in Wellington, some are in um, Queenstown, um, and there's about five here in Christchurch. So, you know, very much at an early stage, just highlighting the size of the problem, um, highlighting the, the the interesting sort of solution, um, because at that point, it, it's, it's quite an early stage. And so you may not have too much to demonstrate at that point. So you've really got to find who the right angel investors are that believe in you and believe in your journey. Um, so it's really about trying to find those um, right angels. Um, and then, you know, like, Probably just, um, you know, knowing that there's that some of the angels are some of the best people that you'll ever meet. So I don't think, you know, being too protective about that equity is something that um, you need to be too cautious about. If you find the right people, they're going to bring the right capital, the smart money, and also the right advice as well. So finding those right angels, um, super critical. That's really interesting. And how did you find them? How, how easy did you find it to, to, to find those angels? Through mutual connections, sometimes through business networks. Um, we've just recently had a couple of psychologists come on board um, because we're solving a, a problem in that space. Um, through some of the networks like Angel HQ, Mainland Angels, for example, those networks exist. They have regular pitch nights, so it's about submitting um, some information to them, and then they see whether or not you're right a, a right fit, um, and then just just doing your you know your best there. I mean, some of these networks have different formats in how you pitch, so some of them are a sort of a pre-submitted five-minute video, which sort of takes the pressure off you um, on the night. You're then yeah. there in person to do a, this Q and A. Um, I really like that format. The other ones, such as Angel HQ, is very much um, it, it's it's a pretty informal pitch. Sometimes they're three minutes, sometimes they're five minutes, but they're really friendly audiences and they're really good. They are hard questions, but I think if you're on a journey, you know, generally you've done a lot of thinking about the problem that you're solving. So you can normally, you know, um, answer, answer the questions just because you've done so much thinking about it. So super positive experience with, uh, with angels for me personally. That's really fantastic to hear. I think probably sometimes people are a little bit intimidated. So it's really nice to hear that actually they're here to help you. They're here to kind of, yeah. they're on your side. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kareem, Vanessa, anything you'd like to add to that conversation around angels? Ooh, um, maybe not just specifically angels, but capital raising full stop. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's a pretty challenging thing to do. Um, and I think some of the best advice I got was actually from someone who works in NZTE or who used to work in NZTE in Australia out of there. And he said, you have to remember that their default position is no, and it's your job to turn that around to a yes. So it, I would say the best advice I'd give is to, to, to practice. Um, never go in unprepared. You need to know your business inside, outside, back to front, and be ready to answer any questions. So pull together your family and friends and like practice until like they get it. You know, if, if they can't understand it, then how is someone... Um, that you want to invest in your company going to understand it because you literally have you know you know 20 20 minutes of their time probably and probably in the first five minutes they've made the decision so yeah I think that's really good insights like anything you've got to you know it's a muscle you've got to practice it whether it's public speaking or present whatever it is you've actually got to 
you've got to use it to make it really, um, really work for you. Uh, Kareem, anything you would add to, to Vanessa's insights there from your experience? I think it also takes a bit of luck. I mean, being in the right place at the right time, getting getting the right people in your room that believe in what you're doing, because what we've seen is sometimes you go to the big VCs and they're like, no, nah, no, we don't see it. But then you, but there'll be, or, or an angel or so on, but you'll find someone inside that organization that believes in you and potentially can go, mm, I see the potential. I can, th there's definitely room there. And it may not be that, that the entire organization comes and backs you up, but it could be that one individual that could back you up. Um, and so, I mean, it, it's, it's really as well a bit of luck, but as Vanessa was saying, you need to be ready for it. Um, stars need to align for it to, to, to also work out. So just keep pushing at it. Yeah, but that bit of luck is, uh, I'm afraid it is the truth. Yeah. Well, I remember once, I can't remember the quote Ashton Kutcher once gave a presentation where he said, good luck looks a lot like hard work. And I think there's elements of truth in that too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, hey, look, we've got about um, uh, eight minutes left. So we've got kind of a, a couple of minutes for each of you. I'd love I'd love to hear what's next. What's next for you guys? So, Nadia, perhaps um, uh, whilst we've got you before you disappear into the fields with the cows, um, could you could you tell us a little bit about what's next for you and for eClean? Um, well, what's next for us? We're actually looking um, at licensing our technology. So we've gone through and um, we're patenting our process and method. And um, we've just been we've just been into Southeast Asia. So we're looking at setting up manufacturing there. Um, and I'm been traveling all around Asia, um, looking at different cities to potentially put a pilot plant um, for either medicinal um, uh, municipal drinking water. Um, or and or wastewater scrubbing. So yeah, we, we're pivoting. We thought we were going to stay on farm, but our technology um, can be applied to industrial and other applications. So yeah, that's, that's us. Really, that's really interesting. And have you? How are you making the decisions about um, about where to set up that pilot plant? Have you got good support and advice from? Uh, people like NZTE or well uh, yes I've got I've been working with NZTE in um, Thailand plus um, my business partner um, is uh, had 40 years experience in um, these markets so he knows it really well so um, yeah um, I've got a little bit of an advantage when it comes to that yeah, it's that little bit of luck again, eh? So it's yeah. kind of that combination. So um, how about you, Adam? What's next for you? I know you've got some pretty exciting things in the pipeline. Yeah, so um, just two days ago, we finished our second clinical trial with the University of Otago for using VR to help people overcome social anxiety. Um, so we're looking to um, publish those results uh, in the next sort of six weeks or so. So so really good result for us. Uh, we find out in about two weeks whether or not we get the second phase of a pilot with the NHS over in the UK, helping children and adults with autism go and experience hospitals using overcome using virtual reality to try and reduce the number of cancellations there. Uh, we just signed Allianz, the global insurer um, for driver rehabilitation using virtual reality um, through Overcome. Um, and we're also doing some, some really interesting work around generative AI and personalization. Um, and that's to start um, in about a month's time. So that'll be a really interesting project over summer. So really just try and um, grow these three channels that we've got to get this technology into the hands of people um, at the same time, exploring some of this AI work as well and what that does for us. So super exciting time for us. Yeah, the generative AI is really interesting. It's um, mm. uh, how how are you um, how are you accessing good information to enable you to make good decisions about that, Adam? Yeah, so we're we're lucky enough to have a really capable team. Also, one of our angel investors um, is over in in the US that um, worked within Google. So we've got really good access into some really good um, capability there. Um, and for us, what we're because obviously we're delivering virtual reality to people um, to do exposure therapy. Um, and so what we're exploring is the use of generative AI to actually build those environments almost in real time. Um, using physiological data that we capture from our users. So we've got a really sweet spot, a really practical application of generative AI that can not only reduce our costs, but also help people improve um, their lives as well. So um, yeah, we've got a lot of people that want to help along that journey. Um, and so we're, we're pretty lucky. lucky That's awesome. Sense. Fantastic. Vanessa, what's next for Orphis? Oh, there's so much going on. It's hard to pick pick things. Um, I would also double down on that generative AI thing. And I think a lot of businesses are looking at what are the advantages that you can um, 
get for, for your business using that. So that's one of the things that we're doubling down on, particularly in looking at um, the automation of data schema, how we can begin to predict the best way to visualize um, using some of those capabilities. And AWS have now set up a secure environment where we can use a lot of that kind of technology, which is something we're going to be exploring a bit more in the next few months. So that, that's product wise. In terms of market wise, I'll maybe I'll hand over to Kareem for that, but just just um, quickly in terms of uh, the customer base that we have, like we have a lot of customers in local government, but we're also starting to really double down on sustainability and sustainability reporting and how can we help um, corporates or, or larger organizations really share that um, that sustainability story and journey, pairing the data and the story together. So that's something else we're doubling down on. That's really interesting. Kareem? Yeah, I think for us, um, you know, staying true to our, our core is obviously New Zealand, but we're going to have to look um, um, a, a bit further afield. And so the, so Australia is obviously the next big thing for us. We've already, we already have three councils on board in Australia. Um, they've come on board in the last six months. We're looking into the corporate world around, as Vanessa was saying, around um, sustainability and how do you move away from, and in general, it's not just sustainability, but how do you move away from, from governance and, 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 um, legislative reporting where you have to just tick the box because I did it. it doesn't really matter what you you know what you do to actually strategy and relevance and making it interesting and, and understanding the, the the analytics behind it and what are people looking at and what are they not what are they engaging in? and then changing that in, in terms of marketing and communication what can you do differently and so on so it's a, it's kind of a big play here that we're we're, we're going for um, it, it's um, yeah, and so Australia is the next one. There's another one around um, the uh, indigenous community in Australia, and how do you help them become more, whether it's financial or just in general information literate. Um, and so we're working with one of the councils in Northern Territory on that. And, um, in November, meeting with the Minister of Indigenous Affairs around stuff like that. So it's it's quite interesting actually. As we're as we're pushing ahead, we're learning, and we are, um, you know, we have to kind of you know, be a bit flexible and 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 shift and, and kind of focus on, but, but the core is, yeah, we're going to be going abroad. That's um, it's so similar always to what Nadia said. Company. It will always be a crisis company. Oh, that's good. I'm very pleased to hear that. But it's very similar to what Nadia just said about, you know, like you're having to pivot and focus and, and, and that your business, it comes back right full circle to the very first thing we talked about, which is that kind of unpredictability and hectic chaos, because actually, you know, things don't always turn out how you kind of plan. Um, look, I, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone for joining us today. I know you're really busy people. Um, you're fantastic companies. I have a huge respect for any entrepreneur because it um, it terrifies me. I'm someone who likes the security and regularity of a pay packet. Um, and um, truly, it is one of the great privileges of my job to spend time with people who are looking at niches and problems um, and opportunities within the world and being brave enough to go after them. So, look, a huge thank you to all of our panelists for joining today. And thank you to everyone who joined. Um, I hope you got something out of it. I think it's recorded, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. Um, and I'll leave it there, hand back over to um, Avril to, um, to introduce the next session. Thank you all. Perfect. And I'll just follow that up with another thank you, everyone. Incredible. Um, and if there's any more questions, just pop them in the chat. And if our people, our previous panelists can just keep an eye on that, that would be incredible. And thank you for opening up a plug for my own startup. Couldn't have dreamed that up better. So now we are going into a governance.